All right, so in this video, I want to cover the IRS Form 8802. Uh, this is an application to receive a U.S. residency certificate from the IRS. And so we have a slide here where we're going to go over um, who would need this and under what circumstances. And we've got the rules and an example here. And then on the second page, I have an example of an 8802, which we will go ahead and fill out uh, consistent with the fact pattern on this slide. Okay, so starting at the top here, uh, again, this is a form that's filed by either an individual or an entity, right? Either or can file this, even a trust can file this um, with the IRS to certify that they are a U.S. tax resident. If the IRS agrees with the position, then they'll send back a certificate, uh, which confirms that the entity or individual is indeed a U.S. tax resident for federal tax purposes. This is often filed in order to claim benefits under a tax treaty or even an exemption from that. So if you have a U.S. person or a U.S. company and they're doing business overseas, um, they can often get exemptions from that or qualify for treaty relief if they can prove uh, that they are, in fact, a U.S. tax resident. And so this is the certificate that gets provided, which that entity or individual can um, you know, pass on to you know, another party that requests it. Right, so once the form is filed and processed, um, they send you what's called a Form 6166. That's the certification form. Um, so what the form entails is it has the name of the person or entity, tax ID number, the tax period that's being referenced, right? So they don't issue a blanket um, statement that says it's a U.S. tax resident all the time. It only covers a specified period of time, okay? So let's talk about the timing of the certification because this is important. Uh, firstly, the 8802 should be filed at least 45 days before you need the certification form, and that's because of the standard processing time. So if you need something next week, um, it, it's going to be tough, right? I mean, you got to anticipate at least 45, almost 60 days in my experience to give the IRS time to receive the 8802, process it, and then send out the 6166 in the mail, okay? Now, if the applicant is requesting a certification for the current tax year, um, the applicant has to make some additional certifications uh, because the tax year hasn't closed yet. Um, so let's look at an example here, and that'll help kind of illustrate the point I'm, I'm trying to highlight here. We have John Doe forms a Delaware LLC in uh, June 2019. And then John files an 8832 to elect for the LLC to be taxed as a C-Corp. Okay, so by default, the LLC is a single member uh, LLC that's disregarded. And so John files an 8832 to make it a C Corp for federal tax purposes, right? And remember, C corporations are U.S. tax residents under federal tax rules. The election is approved effective June 1, 2019. And then the LLC goes ahead and files their 1120 corporate return for the 2019 tax year. Now, during the next year, June 2020, the LLC needs a certificate of residency uh, for a couple countries where the LLC is doing business, right? So treaty relief, that, things like that. So the LLC, what they need to do is file an 8802 and request a certification for the 2020 year. Now, because it's June 2020, right, we're filing this during June 2020, the tax year has not yet closed. So... The LLC hasn't had to file its 2020 Form 1120 tax return yet. Now, because it hasn't closed, the LLC can still submit this 8802, but they have to make additional certifications that the LLC is a U.S. tax resident, right? It has that C-Corp election, and it's going to continue to be a U.S. tax resident throughout the remainder of the year. Then, um, just like standard practice, after the close of the year, the LLC goes ahead and files its 1120 for that 2020 tax year, okay? Now, let's go look at the example first, and then we'll come back to what the filing fees might be. Okay, so we flip over here. We have our 8802. Um, the top of the form here, applicant's name, right? This is John's uh, company, Fake Consulting Company LLC, the EIN. Um, you can leave this information blank, right? Uh, this is an application for an entity. So obviously you don't have a spouse and you're not filing a joint return. Um, if you were filling this out for an individual and you were married filing joint couple, you have both um, the taxpayer and the, and the spouse information listed here. 
Okay. Now, line one, um, as it states, you can list the applicant's name if it's going to be different than above. In this case, it won't, right? That's our company name. Then we have the address during the year and then where we want the form mailed to. Okay. So we've got our fake street address here for the LLC. Appointee information is if you're appointing um, a third party like a CPA or a lawyer to assist you with this. In this case, uh, John's filling this out by himself so he can leave that section blank. Now, in part four, this is where you want to be very careful to, to pick the right selection. You notice there's a ton of options here. Okay. Now, the LLC, um, you, you have to ask yourself, what is the tax classification of the entity or person for federal tax purposes? Okay. Now, it's not an individual, right? We have an LLC that's a regarded entity, not a partnership, not a trust, not an estate. In this case, the most appropriate classification is a C corporation, okay? And that is the most appropriate classification because although it's an LLC, it is taxable as a C corporation for federal tax purposes, right? Now it says here, uh, if incorporated in the US, you know, just go ahead to line five, otherwise continue. And so what they're asking there is, if this wasn't a U.S. entity, then you would have to enter the country where it's being incorporated or where it was incorporated, rather. So um, this is kind of a, re a unique circumstance. But let's say you had a Cayman Islands company. So it's a corporation, but it's a foreign corp. So they would enter Cayman Islands there. And this would be, you know, the Cayman Islands entity could be a U.S. tax resident if it's engaged in U.S. trader business and has U.S. source ECI. In this case, not, not applicable. We just check corporation and then, like it said, go ahead on to line five to continue the form, right? So uh, line five is asking, was the applicant required to file a tax return for the tax periods on which certification will be based? And the answer is yes, right? So we're filing an 1120. Um, and then lines six, uh, we can leave blank, right? Because this isn't a consolidated return with a parent org. Um, so it doesn't apply to us in this case. And now line seven and eight are important, right? So line seven is where you list the tax year that you want to confirm the tax residency, right? So in other words, we need a 2020 certification that says the entity is a U.S. tax resident for the 2020 calendar year. So we enter 2020, right? That's what the other countries want to see on the form 6166. Now line eight, we have to enter the previous tax period because, again, we filed a tax return in the prior year as a C-Corp uh, because we're getting a certification for the current year. We have 2020 on line 7, 2000, and then line 8 is the, is the uh, previous tax year where we filed a return. And then in line 9, um, you can indicate the purpose of the request, right? So in this case, we're trying to get um, some treaty relief, right? So we're doing it for income tax purposes. If you were applying for VAT exemptions um, in a foreign country, then you would indicate that. And like it says here, you can check, um, you know, you can check more than one box, right? So it's appropriate to need it for multiple um, uh, purposes. Now, line 10 is not always necessary, but in this case it is. So like we said on the, on the slide uh, previously, if you're requesting a certification for a year that has not yet closed, so you haven't filed a return, you need to make additional certifications, right? And so in this case, we had to include this additional perjury statement, which says that, look, our company, Fake Consulting Company LLC, is a U.S. resident and will continue to be one throughout the current tax year. Right. The certification is given under penalty of perjury and to the best of my knowledge and belief, the statements are true, correct and complete. OK, after that's entered there, uh, John taxpayer, his title for the company, he's the CEO, date it, put down a phone number to contact um, John if, if more information is needed. And then he goes ahead and signs it, right, signs it, prints it out and mail it. Now, the last page here is uh, what certifications you need for what years and for what countries. Okay, so in this case, we need the 2020 calendar year certification and we need a certificate for each country that's marked, right? So in this case, we need one for Hungary, we need one for Ireland. Um, so the, the column foots down to two there. And then we need one for Switzerland as well. Now you can enter however many you want, right? But um, in this case, we only need three 
one for each of these three countries. So our total down here, number of certifications requested is going to be three. Okay, now after all that's said and done, all these three pages, print them out, sign them, um, and have them mailed into the IRS. Now, if we go back to the slide, cover the uh, filing fee issue. Okay, so the user fee um, is another word for filing fee. It's calculated based on the type of applicant um, that's filing this form. So individuals have to pay an $85 fee. So if this was an individual requesting U.S. tax residency certification, 85 bucks, um, and then all other applicants are the 185 number, right? So in this case, for our example above, we have an LLC taxable as a C Corp. The user fee is going to be $185, okay? Now, to note here, what's also uh, kind of confusing, uh, although it shouldn't be, is the user fee is on a per 8802 basis. It does not matter how many different countries you have listed as uh, the requesting party, right? So if John submits 1802 and requests certifications for these three countries, Switzerland, Ireland, and Hungary, the user fee is still just the 185, right? It's not 185 per country. It's just one, $185 for this solitary 8802 form, okay? So that covers it for this video. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.